Hello and welcome. In this video we're describing how to create an end-to-end -end enterprise planning system based on real client requirements in less than 20 minutes. We were approached by a large German listed company to demonstrate how we quickly can build a planning system for them and they gave us some sample data. This is just really sample data, has nothing uh, to do with reality but it's based on the structure of their SAP system which is uh, one of the key sources for the planning system. So we have uh, in this sample data sample data information, so they have a variety of source systems, not just SAP but other ones as well. They have controlling ar areas as an organizational entity, they have cost centers, they have cost elements which are in the end accounts, they have versions and they have the amount for the particular transaction. We have these transactions for the actuals, as we can see here, we have these transactions for budget data, as we can see here. And then we have the details for the dimensions, so that, uh, for example, cost centers aggregate to business areas, they aggregate to countries, to locations, and they have a description. And we have the same thing for the cost elements, where we have multiple hierarchies, like uh, description level 1 to level 4. And I will now just demonstrate what does it take in a Keras to build a planning system with this data. So in, we initially create an Keras account, which really only takes a few minutes. You just enter your details, then Keras will automatically create your Keras tenant, which is using a standard Azure Microsoft SQL Server database and in the first step you will see a wizard in the wizard you will see your database details this is a standard database that you can access with literally any client tool not just Power BI and Excel where we provide specialized integration but nearly any client tool that is out there for example Tableau, Click, MicroStrategy uh, pretty much any analytics or BI solution so from here you have now a variety of options to integrate your data. You can either use the Acaris apps, which are complete out-of-the-box solutions for a variety of software as a service and accounting systems. You just add as many companies as you want to, as many entities. And Acaris will automatically create an optimal data model in SQL Server for these sources. And not just the data model, but also the reports and planning forms. In this case, the client wasn't using any of these ones, so we can use the generic option. With the generic options, we have two. We have the Acaris Instant Link that allows you to pretty much integrate any data source without any ETL. You just point to your data source, so it could be SQL Server, different databases, SSAS services, Power BI analysis services, so you set up your data source. And then you can, based on this data source, immediately link the relevant dimension tables from here. In this case, as we had the data in an Excel file, we use, we're using the third option, which is the Cube Wizard, which is a very easy to use tool to build Actaris data models. So here we have the option now to link to either Excel files, Power BI data, or SQL Server. In this case, we had an Excel file. We just click on this Excel file. And now we will see the structure of this file. So this is the initial sheet with the actual. So the only thing that we have to do is we put in a name and call this, for example, finance, and then just specify how we want to handle these columns. And in this case, it's mostly dimensions. So this is the source system dimension. Then we have another dimension for the controlling area, another one for the cost center, another one for the cost element, another one for the version, then the actual value, this one we can ignore. And the only thing that we need to do here now is just to click a button and the Keras will automatically create the respective model. So it has now loaded all the data into the Keras model, which is in the end the star schema data warehouse based on SQL Server. And we can have a look now, so we see the dimensions now and we see the fact table or the cube as it's called here. We can have a look at the data and for example look at it 
by cost element and version. And we see now that they are here at the moment we only have the actuals. So this was the first step. Now we do the same thing for the for the plan. So we go back to the cube wizard, connect to the spreadsheet, but as opposed to the actuals, we're now using the plan. So we click on next. So we now have here the the plan data. And we're using an existing cube, which is the finance one that we've just built, and now we can just specify the same thing. It automatically detects the right dimension here. So these are all our dimensions. And then the value here. And then the scenario for the version dimension. So we have now all assigned. The rest here, again, is not relevant for our purpose, so we can ignore them and just click on Update Cube. And now I have the new data in there. Let's just double check this. If we go back to the model and have a look, we can see now we have uh, the data here for both scenarios. The only thing left is now to create the dimension, or to add additional elements to the dimension level. The process is exactly the same. We are just pointing to our Excel file again. Now we're using the sheet with the hierarchies for the cost center. So the only thing we do here is now we say we want to use an existing cube. This is finance. And what we want to do is we want to use the cost center hierarchy. So we use this as our dimension for the cost center and then just add the additional hierarchies here that we prefer to as attribute. So this one is the first one. This is the attribute for cost center. Um, this call this business area. Then we have the next one here, another attribute for country. And we have another one for the location. And the description as well as an attribute. And then we just update the dimension. So we now have updated our model. If you go back to the model, we will see now that we have the hierarchy in the dimension. So we have here now the hierarchy for the cost centers, to business areas, to countries, to location, to description. If we want to see this in a hierarchical form, we can just drag and drop this column now and build the hierarchy as we need it. And this supports unified modeling, so you don't have to set up these hierarchies up front. You can build them as you need them. So now we have to drill down from country to the cost center. So the only step left now is to set up Power BI. So what I do is I just connect to SQL Server, put in the server details, define this as direct query, and sign in with my carrier's account. So here we can see now our data. And so these are now the carrier's uh, tables. And you can see uh, the ones here are the dimensions. And the ones that are called cube are either views that make this easily readable what the structure is. So here I can see actually the element names or the cube, which is using the IDs, which is much faster to process. Um, so we're using that one here now and just click on the related tables that will give us the uh, dimensions that are related to this. And then the only thing we need is the service account that manages the access. So that's it. So now we've added our tables here. So this is the Actarius data model. And now we can immediately start building our report. So well, I have already added two visuals here, matrix and visual planning. If I want to add another one, you can get them directly from the App Source Marketplace. So just search for Actarius and all our visuals are here. Two of them are already in this report because we're using them as an organizational visual. If I want to add more, I can just click here. This is for table edit that allows you to do the modeling. And then let's add one more, which is the variance for variance analysis. So um, actual budget variances and add this one as well. Now we have four different options. Let's start with the typical for matrix oriented planning. So just um, put this visual in there. And then the only thing we need to do is just to add 
the dimensions and the fact tables that we want to use. So let's use this for the value. We want to use the cost element as a filter, the cost center also as a filter, control link as a filter, and the source system also as a filter. Ah, oh, sorry, the, the cost element would be better as a as a row. And then the only thing left is the version in the columns over here. I've now got an initial view here. Um, we just need to configure here now the database. So we just specify here the cube is called finance and the database is AP Demosus. So now this error message will go away. Ah, there's one more thing that we need to do is um, with the authentication, we're just using a normal tax measure. I'm just putting here user equals, and I'm just hard coded now, so you can use a variety of different options. But here, just for the sake of simplicity and ease of use, I just put in hard coded my name. Normally, you would use a tax variable that returns the current username, and then just put that in the username um, field on the visual, and the other parameters here for key and name and now everything is there. Um, this doesn't look very nice so you have now all the Power BI features to make this look, look a little bit nicer. So I want to see the amount in thousands. Maybe let's do a bit of a hierarchy here as well. So we've got the cost element. Maybe change this a little bit and use the cost element as um, a filter. So we have now one filter here. Maybe let's put another one for the source system as well. We also make this a filter in Power BI drop down. So, and now we can immediately start to do our budgeting. So, for example, if we want to put in here now a fixed number, I can put in 600,000 and see immediately what the implications are. So, this will go up to 3.1. Let's do another one here. Let me see if this we want 50,000 here. And let's put here 60,000 instant updates here. So if we're happy with all this, we just save it. And this is now in the database, so we can immediately compare the two results. But this was simple again. Obviously, we have now the option here, again, to use um, hierarchy. So maybe switch this. So let's say the client now wants to see the cost center as opposed to the cost elements. So let's put the cost element also here as a, as a filter. Make this the filter here. And the drop down box. So now we have the, the cost element here. And as opposed to having the cost element here, we take this one away and use the cost center hierarchy here. We want to aggregate these two locations. So I have another drill down from location to cost center. And again, I've I have immediately my planning options. So on the question mark here, you can see the different options. So you can see a relative increase, relative decrease, repeat entry, and so on. So let's say we want to do a relative increase um, for Berlin. That's just one thing that I have to turn on here is that um, the users are allowed to do splashing. So right on aggregations. So if I search here for splash, this is at the moment turned off, so let's turn this on. So now I can write back here as well and say, okay, what happens if we have a 10% increase here? You can see then, you know, how does this distribute to the lower levels um, in New York? And I can see immediately the distribution. This was all on the one um, cost center C9 here. So these are just the, the entry options. Um, this doesn't look very nice, so we can make this a little bit nicer. Uh, the carries, we have a variety of Power BI layout backgrounds. So let's use um, this one here and let's say we want this one here where we also don't have the options for KPIs. We want this to be fit on the page and we want this without transparency. So this one we make a little bit smaller. I will show you now what the other options are. So again I can just duplicate this now and say okay this was initially the matrix. But now I want to turn this into a variance analysis. So now this is a bit easier to see. And then just to get the budget actual comparison, I will just add two measures so that I, the visual 
can use the actuals and the budget separately. So let's call this ACT. And ACT is a very simple calculation that uh, is the total of the amount. And I want to filter it to the version name. And the version name is actual. And then I'm doing exactly the same thing for the budget. I think this was called plan. So maybe to be consistent, let's call this also plan. So now we have two measures here, and to make this visual um, show the variances, I just replace this one now with actual. This is the actual value, and the comparison is the plan. And now I immediately get an actual budget variance based on IBC principles, where I have the option to drill down from, in this case, location to the particular cost center. We can immediately see the variances there. And if I want to, I can switch to relative view. So I have now here the percentage difference. And if I want to, I can immediately do my planning here as well. So I can click on the value and do my planning here and write back my plan values directly from here. So this will adjust now the planning results. So now I've got the new situation here. So this was the variance analysis. Let's again just copy this and turn this into visual planning. So again, the only thing we do is we switch in the visual to visual planning, light value compared to the comparison scenario. At the moment, we're 37% below the uh, comparison value, but we can immediately do our planning here by just dragging and dropping on the charts. So I can see now this has gone up to 6.1 million. Let's increase this further. So now we're 15% below the target and now we are 3% below. Let's make this a little bit higher. So now we are at 9.3, sorry, 9.3 million, 11% above our targets. And let's say we are happy with this. We can now save this. And this shows the power of the Terrace engine. So this was done on an aggregated level. So we had here costs and aggregations and, and aggregations also in the other dimensions and still it took uh, just a few seconds to write back these values and this was potentially thousands of values written back into the relational database which demonstrates the power of the Actaris engine. You can also lock in targets, let's say we need to lock in this 9.3 million target but I want to change some details, for example I want to do a little bit less here, you can see all the other ones automatically adapt to still achieve this 9.3 million target. Okay, next one is the modeling. So here I have now a copy of the previous report, but I want to switch this now to modeling. One of the Ecteris visuals, we actually have eight, but I will only demonstrate uh, the four here. So this one I want to switch to Ecteris table edit, which allows you to edit any table, and in particular the model tables that you're using in your model. So here we have now the table edit visualization. Here the users can select any table that the administrator has enabled uh, for editing for this particular user group or user. And this can either be an Actaris table or a link table using uh, Actaris instant link, so from a completely different system like, I don't know, Salesforce or a Power BI table. And the users can directly edit this table here. So here we see now the version, which is the version dimension with the scenarios that we automatically loaded from the source system actual and plan, but we want to extend them now with the forecast scenarios. Just put in here forecast and save this, and this has now changed the data model. So if I switch back to the matrix, so here we can see now back the matrix visualization, and we see automatically the new forecast scenario. The users can now immediately do their planning either by copying data from one of the existing scenarios or directly entering there. And again, instantly see the changes here um, and do their, their planning. So this concludes the demo of the four Actaris visuals plus the initial creation of a model with some real structure data. And you can see what is possible in just less than 15 minutes to generate uh, more or less a complete planning system or at least the initial version of a, of a, of a planning system with the ease of Actaris and the power of Power BI. As usual, for any questions, please uh, contact our chat team or review 
our extensive video libraries and other supporting materials, our wikis, to see uh, how Actaris could potentially help you in your scenario. Thank you very much.